Hey there, neighbors and naysayers. This is Clint Finney again for another Eastern Ohio Grazing Council web update. This month, uh, we were hoping to go out and do an additional pasture walk, but as you all know, COVID has kind of put the uh, hurting on us going out and visiting with other producers. And for those of you that don't know, my wife and I are expecting here at the end of December. In fact, by the time you're seeing this video, the baby will have, have already got here, I'm sure. And uh, so I, I kind of stayed sequestered and and limited the amount of people that I've had interaction with. But we wanted to go ahead and, and put an update out and talk to y'all and, and talk about some things that we're seeing out there in the field. And uh, hopefully we'll be having some planning meetings here to get our winter activities all together and have a good slate of winter meetings. Again, they'll probably be virtual, uh, but wanted to put this video out because in the process of thinking about all those topics that we need to cover in the winter, uh, I had some things rolling around in my mind and this is the time of year when, when I have the time to sit down and work through some things and I wanted to share with you guys uh, what I had come up with for those thoughts. While I'm on that subject though, if any of you have topics that you would like to see us include in these grazing videos or in our January, February, and March videos here coming up, we would be glad to hear them. We're trying to set up a, a grazing council meeting probably somewhere around January the 5th to discuss what we're going to talk about through the winter. And uh, if you've got topics, uh, please send them in to us. Please also be specific about what part of that topic you'd like to hear from us on. Uh, so that we can direct the focus a little better. With that, let's uh, go ahead and get started. I'll start out by showing you what we've got going on at our place right now. This is a picture of some steers on stockpiled grass, although it's not very tall stockpiled grass. Basically, this is what's left over after the cows have made rotation, and this is what's left over. This is actually the field that I did the, the presentation on sorghum sedan grass. Uh, once we grazed that sorghum sedan, it never did come back. We got a frost, killed it, and, and this is the aftermath of the forage that grew up after that sorghum sedan. It's pretty interesting. It grew pretty good, uh, but nothing on the whole farm really grew well, uh, so we didn't have enough forage to bring the cows back, but there's enough forage out there for the, the, that group of stockpiles or that group of steers to graze over, and I typically like to do this every fall. I pull the cows in November 15th, put them on hay or, or whenever I run out of pasture, I guess November 15th is my usually the, the date that we would start feeding hay here, but it may be December, it may be January for the cows. But when I do, uh, I typically go ahead and rotate those steers through one last time. And that does a couple things for me. Uh, one, I'm using up forage that has regrown behind the cows, but it's not enough quantity to graze that big herd of cows through. It's enough quantity to graze a smaller herd of steers through, uh, but not the big herd of cows. This, the second thing is that forage is really washy, really vegetative, and it's really not going to stand up to the winter uh, that we've got lying ahead of us. It's going to wilt and go away as we get frost and freezes and snows. So I'm just trying to get those steers to use that up. Now, now we're, we're really paying attention to stop grazing heights. I'm not wanting to graze it down any lower than four inches. I never want to graze it down lower than four inches. Uh, but we're just cruising those steers over that real quick and letting them pick out the good stuff. The other thing it does for me is it gives me one last kind of slow rotation over these fields to look at things that need to be done through the winter time before we turn out next spring again. Uh, draining water lines that happen to be above the ground, fixing insulators along fences, um, maybe changing fences one way or the other, maybe replacing fences, but it gives me one last slow look over those fields. Uh, because I only move them every three days, uh, you know me, I typically move every day at least, if not every 12 hours, but with this group, I kind of really hold back. Uh, it's getting dark really early. I don't have the time to move them and a group of lambs and feed cows hay and sheep hay and the hundreds of hogs that I got back at the barn uh, all before dark every night. So I usually move them Wednesday night and then sometime on the weekend, Saturday or Sunday. Saturday or Sunday, I build all the fences I need for the week. So. Uh, Saturday or Sunday moves easy, the Wednesday night move, I'm typically doing it in the dark. But we move them every three days, just kind of cruise around the pasture field and 
we'll eventually get back around to where we've got the real good stockpile grass. Uh, one, one thing that I want to point out in our operation uh, with the grass fed steers, the, the two things that have really made a world of difference with our grass fed program, uh, be it lambs or be it steers, either one. Uh, one is stockpiled forage. Uh, when we started grazing these steers and heifers on stockpiled grass through the entire winter, it, it, it made our grass-fed steers, grass-fed meat so much better, uh, and it made it so much faster. We actually got those steers down to that 24-month range uh, to get them finished, where when we were feeding them some hay, uh, even being just a few months of hay, uh, we were having a hard time getting steers to finish under the, the 24 and, and, and sometimes under the 30 month range. The other thing that really improves things if you've got low quality hay is finding some sort of supplementation technique. It can be those hard lick tubs, it can be molasses in a, a, roll, a roller tub, uh, it can be lots of things. If you're not grass fed like me, you know, it can be some sort of grain product, but. Um, keeping those animals on a good nutritional plane, no matter what our hay quality is, makes a world of difference in, in how fast we can get things to, to grow and to gain weight. Um, I, I'm not gonna get in the weeds on what product you should use and when, uh, that's, that's a decision for you all to make if you need some sort of supplementation. But, and I'm also not one of those people who thinks that our cows need to be gaining weight through the entire winter. Uh, if we've done a good job of grazing through the summer, our cows probably are going into the winter pretty heavy. And, and it's not always a bad thing that they lose a little bit of weight going through the winter. Um, I, I know in our hog operation, I, it sows, I, I'm trying to get them thinner a lot of times uh, between litters because it'll give them trouble uh, being being overweight and being heavy and cows can do the same thing. So it's not always a bad thing that they lose a little bit of condition, but we don't want them to lose too much condition. And in my case, where our cows are still feeding calves, I don't want them to lose much, if any, condition through the winter because I don't want it to affect that calf and I don't want to affect the growth of that calf. Um, having stockpile grass, though, ha has really made our grass finishing program go now you know for those of you that are grain finishing steers and you say well 24 months i can finish one in 16 months at the most or 17 months uh that that's really slow it, it, it is although um uh, we're doing it somewhat more efficiently i'm doing it somewhat lower cost and, and to finish a steer on on grain uh, we're worried about throughput. We're worried about less days on feed because every day is costing us a lot more money. We're on forage. It's a little different story. Uh, it's not costing us more to have them uh, per day. Uh, with grain fed operations in feedlots or whatever, it's all about throughput. And, and same with, with my hog operation. You know, if, I, if I've got hogs, I want them to finish faster because I want to be able to put more hogs through that barn and, and same in a feedlot. Um, where our grass fed stuff, we can we can afford to, to allow them to be 24 months. Would I like them to finish faster? Sure I would. Um, but this is just one step that has gotten our steers to finish a little faster. Uh, we can do other things as, as I improve forage quality on the farm. I assume that we're going to lower that down. Uh, although we've got to, with grass fed programs, they've got to be kind of balanced around that winter time and, and the cost of getting an animal through the winter. Quick picture slide of our sheep and goats uh, out on stockpiled forage. This is, a, I feel, a totally different system than what our steers are. Those steers would have been in with this group up until about a month ago. And we kind of split them apart. Uh, when it becomes evident that it's time to move those steers towards stockpile grass and when the cows go on hay for the winter, that's when the split happens because that's one less group I have to move. When the cows don't have to move every day anymore, then the steers can, can fill in that gap and they can move every day independent of the sheep. Uh, other times in the year, I want those grass-fed steers in with these lambs because it's one less group I have to move. I'd rather move two groups than three groups. I'd really rather move one group than two groups, but 
Uh, I try to keep these on a higher nutritional plane all the time, so that's that's the way it has to be. Uh, plus, it's it has to do with fencing too. Uh, when I first wean the calves, I like to have them on two or three strand fence. The sheep are already on two or three strand fence, so that works out just great. But a totally different system here. The the growing lambs are the, this is all growing lambs, uh, growing goats. The ewe lambs and does are, are on the heavy use pad eating hay. That's not where I want them to be, but because of the drought, that's the way that it is. But our sheep and goats basically graze the same pastures through the winter that they were on in the summer. And that's not really by design. They could graze different pastures, doesn't matter. But we are continually leaving a bunch of forage behind us when we graze those sheep after July 1st or August 1st, we're leaving lots and lots of forage behind. And it's typically fescue because the, the sheep and, and goats and the growing steers kind of refuse it. Uh, but once we get a frost, they'll go back through and they'll graze that stockpile of fescue. So a different system really than the steers. Uh, we move them every day and, and that's part and parcel with goats and sheep. I just find it's easier to move them every day than it is to hope and pray they stay in the field every day if we're going to leave them for longer than a day. Uh, when I first got sheep, I was trying to leave them for two or three, four days, maybe a week on a pasture field. And what I found was if I moved them every day, I didn't have to worry about them getting out. They were content with the field that they had. But if they were on a field for more than a day and they soiled that field up, they had a tendency to find a way to go somewhere else. So this, these are the same fields that we graze through the through the summer, or late summer. We're just rotating these sheep around. We took this picture 30 seconds after we moved those sheep onto that field, just in the, the other picture. Uh, and this is what sheep and, and goats do, sheep especially, uh, to a field that has snow on it. That was about a two inch, maybe three inch snow. And, and they just kind of, Hawed right through it, and and, and my, my cousin who lives up above our farm, he can see it most every, all the farm from his house. He says I can always tell when I get up in the morning where the sheep are because there's bear patches everywhere. Uh, they they go they do a good job of kind of rooting around through that snow and finding grass in, in among it, and and that's not a bad thing. Uh, I'm here to tell you that. Uh, when we first got sheep and goats and we were grazing through the winter time, I would take a bale out there and unroll it every time we got a snow like this just uh, so that my neighbors didn't think I wasn't feeding them. And what I found was the sheep and goats would lay on the hay and go dig through the snow for grass. They they never would eat the bale anyway. So I, I've kind of quit taking a bale out to them. I just make sure that we move them every day and give them good grass. Uh, again, we're, you know, we've got to remember our, our fall and, and winter grazing, our, our grazing stop heights. We don't want to graze this lower than two to three inches. Um, this picture looks bad. It looks like it's way lower than that. In fact, it almost looks like dirt, but it isn't. There's lots and lots of forage in there it's just because of the snow and the way they rolled it around and kind of compacted the forage down a little bit. It'll bounce right back and look pretty good. One other thing that I thought we ought to touch on uh, is is we, we've talked about stop grazing heights and I know I had this question come in this fall and I didn't get a, get a chance to answer it but uh, our, our stop grazing heights in the winter should be just the same as our stop grazing heights in the summer in my mind there are other people who argue and say something different but uh, we need to stop at that three to four inch range now we're going to talk a little bit more about that later uh, with some other slides but um, if we we get in a situation where we've overgrazed them a little bit in the winter, then we've created an opportunity that we need to get some uh, some some seed out there in that field, either drilled in or frost seeded in, uh, to help that forage stand some in the spring. Just so you know, I wasn't um, making up that story there. Th this is a side by side comparison. The left hand side is where the sheep are or were then. And the right hand side is the field they came off of. You can see they didn't even get close to that fence. You can see a post standing straight out there in front of you. Didn't get close to the fence, uh, but away from the fence, they kind of rooted through the snow, dug through the snow, pawed through the snow. And then the, the field on the left is fresh and clean and the sheep were in there right away and, and started in pawing through the snow again uh, there that evening. This is just a picture of the field we're currently unrolling hay in. Um, this was on a Wednesday evening. We moved these cows into this on Sunday evening. So they've only been there a couple of days. And I have a video here coming up of 
uh, where this, those, those cows came from and, and why we moved them. But we moved them because it was getting pretty bare. Uh, it had been rolled over. Uh, all the, the field had been covered with hay. It was getting pretty covered with manure. It was just time to move on to another field. And that got me to thinking about um, unrolling hay, bale grazing, outwintering um, cows. And, and it's, it's a constant thought. And I, and I know that if, as I watch the Internet's constant articles, thoughts about um, this type of feeding this time of year. And I got to thinking about why we do it and what we what we what our goal here is. This field is is a field that we haven't unrolled bales on. We haven't spread any manure on. It's kind of out of the way, and so it makes a great field to unroll hay on. It's got frost-free water. We've got a, a Mirco ball water in this field, so good frost-free water. That was the other reason why we moved them up here because the other field we were unrolling in didn't have a frost-free water source. So um, it makes a good, this makes a good field to do this on. Now, you know, we're only going to do it once or we're only going to do it once in a 10 year period, I hope, um, because we don't want to, I don't want to unroll on it year after year after year because we, we, we messed up and done that before and it creates a problem. It eventually gets your nutrient levels too high. It gets compaction in spots and you have a hard time getting things to regrow. But what we find is if we just unroll on it, uh, for one winter and then don't come back to it for five or six or eight or ten or more years um, we can kind of improve the field a little bit we might be able to get some new genetics as far as seed out there in the field but we get kind of some rejuvenation out of that field because of the fertility we put in but while, while we were doing this and while I was um, looking at this field you know the cows had just moved in here a couple of days before and right before I started taking this video uh, I noticed there was a bunch of cows out there grazing and and that's something I, I don't think we think about much when we're unrolling hay or when we're bale grazing or feeding out in the field but you know just because we've taken the bale out there doesn't mean that the cows decide to eat a bale and and stop grazing they don't they don't hardly ever stop grazing uh, grazing is a natural process one of the reasons why I like bale feeding this way unrolling bales because the cows are eating with their head down much the same way they would be if they were grazing but grazing in the winter can become a problem uh, because they can really overgraze a field uh, we, we get a question every once in a while from guys about well I've already got all these paddocks set up why don't I just set a couple bales in each field I can do it once a month and I just rotate the cows through those same set of pastures well, the problem with that and the problem I have with that is the cows continue to graze. And, and what ends up is you'll have your whole farm overgrazed by rotating them around the, the farm. So we just need to be concerned about how much grazing they're doing. And so by, by unrolling bales in this field or if we're bale grazing, uh, we realize that they're going to overgraze the field. And, and we're also we're putting seed down in the form of hay. We're also going to put some seed down in the form of frost seeding or drilling here this spring uh, just to get that field to kind of come back. We may even think about some annuals. Uh, one of my favorites is Italian rye in this situation. Oats is good too if we're going to use a drill. Uh, but we need to, to, to recognize that they are still grazing out there. Uh, that it's a, it's a natural process. Uh, the other thing with this picture, it looks like everything's wonderful. It's frozen. It's snow covered. Uh, it would be great. I'm here to tell you that that field's not always going to be frozen. It's not always going to be snow covered. And, and there'll come a point when we'll have to pull those cows off and put them on heavy use pad. I don't know when that will be. I can't plan for it. Uh, but at some point, when we start taking bales out there and unrolling them and the cows tromp the, the hay, freshly unrolled hay into the mud, um, that's when it's time for us to stop. When, when they ruin a bale almost immediately from it getting in the field, that's when it's time to stop. In fact, that's probably way too late, but the way our rains come in the winter, uh, we're typically good, 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 and then all of a sudden it, it gets real bad real quick, and so then it's time to move them to the heavy use pad. Now, some of you might be thinking, if you've got a heavy use pad, why are you bothering with this? Well, there's lots of reasons, but one of the, the biggest reason for us, our calves are, are usually June calves. We do get some calves that go all the way into September, first part of September. They're not old enough to wean yet, wouldn't want to wean them if I did, uh, but the calves don't do well on that closed up tight heavy use pad. Cows, they do just fine. Ewes are the same way. The ewes do great. 
the lambs do terrible on heavy use pad. Uh, it's not something that says we can't do it. We can do it. We can put them out there on the heavy use pad. Uh, but I just like to do it for short periods of time. Uh, for a, a whole winter, having those baby calves on the field just doesn't seem to work for us. Uh, also, I just like to be able to spread the fertility out with the cows instead of having to load manure. It takes us days and weeks to get manure spread off a of heavy use pad if we use it all winter, where this way we limit the amount of manure that we have to actually haul. Uh, I, I'm not trying to say that a heavy use pad isn't great. A heavy use pad is a great tool. It's a great part of the winter. I'm always going to tell you that to get through the winter and winter feeding time, it's good to have two or three different options. And this is by far my favorite option if the winter would stay froze or if the winter would stay snow covered. As I was working on this presentation, the ultimate what if situation happened. Uh, we got eight inches of snow and as I was out there putting hay out the cows that morning, I said, you know, I can't miss this opportunity to take this picture and talk about what the what if. Um, always with stockpiled grass, I, I get that what if question. What if it snows? What if the snow's too deep? What if the cows can't graze through the snow? And I'll be the first to admit that eight inches of snow isn't enough that I even really have to worry about the cows or steers on stockpiled grass if the stockpiled grass is taller than the snow. Uh, but for this group of cows, they're on unrolled hay. And uh, we have the sheep that are on stockpiled grass, the steers on stockpiled grass. The, the question then becomes, what if? What, what do we do? And, and so often, the, the threat of deep snow is what people use as their argument for not doing any sort of stockpiled forage or winter grazing. And I just wanted to talk a minute about that, about our day uh, when we got that snow there the other day. Um, this is a group of the cows. Uh, we just go and unroll as, as normal. Now, if the snow were just a little bit deeper, it would have made unrolling hay a little more difficult. And and then it just becomes, we take bales to the field, we unroll what we can. Uh, we may even uh, hook a bale ring and take it up on the hill and set the bale down and set the bale ring over it and just let them go to bale rings for, for those couple of days when the snow is on. The good thing about Eastern Ohio is snows happen, but they don't stay for long, usually a couple of days and they've melted off and they've gone away. And I've talked before about bale grazing being one of my favorite options when the snow does get deep because the cows kind of pack that snow down around the bales. It makes kind of an impromptu heavy use pad, so to speak. But we end up just going out in the field and unrolling hay. Now, that day we were scheduled to unroll two bales. We would normally do that all at one time, but that day we unrolled one bale and then went back later and unrolled a second bale, uh, just in case the, the, the bales were gonna get smashed into the snow. But after the second bale, we realized it really wasn't a problem. They didn't get smashed so the bale kind of unrolls and packs that snow down so you don't worry about the, the snow and, and about the, the hay getting lost. But the what if situation always is, well, what do, you, what do we do? Well, it makes the day a little longer, those days when it really snows, uh, but it's not something that we can't combat. And I, I've got another picture here of the sheep, and we'll talk about what we do with the stockpile when it does snow. Again, here on our what if sort of slide, uh, these are the sheep that are on stockpiled forage. And when we got that deep snow, uh, we actually went out in the field and, and was uh, contemplating whether we we're going to put hay out or not. And Dad said, when I was up there this morning, they were all still grazing. And they were. They were all still grazing through uh, the snow, even though that's an 8-inch snow and the forage underneath there isn't quite 8 inches tall. They were still digging around and, and grazing through that snow. But uh, because we got snow and because I've got some other things going on right now, uh, we decided let's just go up there and we'll unroll half a bale uh, for this group of lambs and just let them have the hay. Now, I went up later. I continued to move them, uh, just move them to a new field. And when I went up that night to move them to the new pasture, they immediately went ahead and moved and started digging through the snow again. An hour later, when I was back up there, they were all laying on the hay, but none of them were really eating much of it but they had ate some of the stockpiled grass through the snow. So it, it always becomes that what if situation. Well, what do you do if it snows? Uh, steers are in the same situation. They were on stockpiled grass. Uh, I, I gave them a, 
small bale hay. They went and played with it a little while, went back to grazing. Uh, but you know, if we get a deep snow, then then we just have to change what we do. We have to go ahead and give them some hay and and let them go through that deep snow event, and and it'll melt eventually, and we'll go back to grazing stockpiled grass. But just thought I should add that uh, to this presentation, just because we talk about that what if, what if it snows. And, and like I said, it makes my day a little bit longer because I've got to feed hay to a couple more groups than I normally would. But in the end, it's not a reason not to graze forage through the winter. It, it's just an extra added thing that we have to do when we get snows. Well, that's a wrap for this month's pasture update. Um, as I said there in the beginning slide, if y'all have any questions, comments, um, prospective topics, if you'd like to see us cover here in the coming months, we would be glad to hear them. Like I said, I'd, I'd like for them to be pretty specific to, to give us an idea of where you're coming at. Uh, it doesn't do us any good to have a really broad topic and not cover the, the questions that you wanted answered. So if you can get those to me or to Beth, we'd appreciate it. Um, be looking for uh, winter meetings coming up here in January. Um, as win winter kind of progresses here, we're still hoping to go out and do some other pasture type things and get some good stockpile videos, some good stockpile pictures, uh, just to show you what other grazers are doing to get through the winter. With that, I'll say, see you next time.